Okay, so it's time for the next step, turning that mood board into actual clothing ideas. You might have also noticed that since the last video, it's grown a little bit. I've added some more things to it. There are more fabric swatches. Yay, fabric! And that's really because for me, my board evolves as I get deeper into my actual design process. That being said, you should not be working on your mood board if you're out of this step. If you are making tech packs or making patterns, whatever you're doing, the mood board just lives in this step of the process. And with my little black dress collection, because everything's the same color, I really just wanted to focus on texture and line and silhouette. So I added more elements to the board that to me reflect that. I usually do a round of rough sketches, either with my Wacom tablet or just with regular pencil and paper. And for me personally, I like to keep my swatches nearby if I don't have them already on the board, just because I like to refer to them in terms of how they go into the fit and the way the fabric falls. To me, that's really important. And I think that's super helpful. Also, cost is really important in what I'm doing. And when I'm designing something, I usually have the prices on the fabric next to me. And I know that I cannot, for example, design a floor length ball gown out of the most expensive fabric that I have a swatch of, or that it's going to be an astronomically priced dress. Sometimes I switch up the scenery a little bit to help me think better while I sketch, but I will always have a copy of my mood board on my phone with me just to refer back to. But I really just kind of keep looking at my mood board as I work up my ideas and I try to see if I think my ideas will fit in with the other pieces, if they kind of vibe with the mood board. And that's really how I keep the collection cohesive. How do you make a collection cohesive? Here's how I think about it. When you look at your closet, you didn't buy all of your clothes at the same store, right? I actually don't know anybody who exclusively shops at one store and only buys one brand. I mean, that actually would kind of be a little weird. But it looks like the same person bought all of the clothes in there, right? So that's kind of how I like to think about it. I want all the pieces in my collection to be different, but I want them to look like they would all hang in the same closet. Anyone who knows me in person and has worked with me in real life knows that I use the term cousins a lot. They're not brother and sister, but you can look at them and tell that they're related. So that's really important to me. And that's really what I'm doing is forming design relationships between my garments. And from there, I usually get into either flat drafting or draping my looks. So this can be an interesting step too, because sometimes you draw something out and you realize that it looks awful in real life. That has happened to everyone. Guys, I've been doing this for years and every now and then I make something and I'm like, wow, I need to tap out for the day. That was horrible. Like, yuck. And this is really the part in my process where I do a lot of my creative problem solving. Who am I designing for? What's missing in her wardrobe? Where is she going? What is her price point? Will this pattern actually work? Those are some things that I think about. So comment down below. I'm actually curious. What problems have you guys faced in your design process? Have you gotten to this step? And what issues have kind of arisen? So I would love to hear from you guys if you want to comment down below. Really, I think that fashion designers are really just problem solvers. Go ahead and like and subscribe, all that jazz. But it looks like I have my work cut out for me. So I will see you guys and I'll check in with you when I get to the next step. Bye.